Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again, of course, with Geography Now. Right, Micronesia. I think that's how it's pronounced, Micronesia. I'm going to go out on a whim and say it's a small country. Just going by name alone, obviously. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, uh, don't know what else to say. Uh, no idea. I have no clue. That seems to be a theme on my channel that I just don't know. So uh, bear with me here. And yeah, we're going to jump right into it. Before we do, please hit that like and subscribe below. That'd be pretty awesome of you if you did that. <laughs> And I would love you for life. But anyways, that's uh let's get into it. Micronesia and that's what now those postcards, that's what I need to do. I I should get like a PO box. Be like, hey everyone, please send me like a postcard from your country. That'd be great. All right, three, two, one. Bam. Hey everybody, before you watch this episode, just a little disclaimer. I was stupid and I booked the wrong day at the YouTube space so we weren't able to film in the studios. So I had to improvise and we filmed in my house. So the next two episodes <laughs> are going to have the same quality of how we used to film the episodes back in like 2016. Well, you're just like me, buddy, because I film in my house, in my bedroom. So <laughs> uh, I wish I had a studio. That'd be great. But your house is way more interesting than mine. Look at all the... Those aren't postcards, are they? They're just pictures. That's amazing. Awesome, dude. I don't think I have the uh, patience to do that on my wall, though. The next two episodes are going to have the same quality of how we used to film the episodes back in, like, 2016. Relatively poor, echoey audio quality and very visible black backdrop. But I did not want to <laughs> not upload a video this week, so I had to give you something. I mean, these Geography Now videos are mostly just about the information, right? Right. Right? Right? Eh, I'm right. sorry, guys. But anyway, I tried my best, and I still wanted to give you a video this week. So without further ado, here we go. It's time to learn geography. No! Want to hear a Micronesia joke? No! Too bad. Imagine a dog named Ray on a dinner date. When the bill came, he had to use his paw and pay, but then was chook and surprised because Ray was broke. Yep. All right, that's Force Rex. What? You know the drill. He's back. He shaved. So worth it. Oh, and hey, Noah's back. Hey. For the record, in this episode, I'm just going to refer to the country as Micronesia because the official title is too long, the Federated States of Micronesia. You get what I'm saying. Anyway, I love... Yeah, I was wondering when I, I was searching for the flag and, or and it said, you know, in the description, I was like, it was a federal, very states. Like, what does that mean? But I, I'm sure I'll find it. Because the official title is too long, the Federated States of Micronesia. You get what I'm saying. Anyway, I love Pacific Island nations because they probably get the least amount of coverage in terms of global awareness, which means Geography Now gets to be a platform for the obscure. Plus, you know, it kind of adds to the Oceania playlist. First of all, the country lies in the sub-region of the Pacific Ocean known as Micronesia, which is obviously where the country gets its name from, which also includes the states of Palau, Nauru, parts of Kiribati, and the U.S. territories of Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands and Wake Island. The country is made up of 607 islands, sometimes collectively collectively referred to wow. as the Caroline Islands. These take up over a million square miles of oceanic territory in their exclusive wow. economic zone. However, in land surface area, they only make up about 217 square miles. All the islands are divided into four states made up of island clusters. They are Yap, Chuk, Pompeii, not Pompeii, Pompeii. Oh, and don't forget this little straggler, Kapingamarangi belongs to it. And finally, little Kosre, which is really only like one little island with a few small islets off its coast. It's the only state with no atolls. The capital, Palakir, is located on Pompeii, the largest, highest, and most populous island in the entire nation. However, the largest okay. city in itself is actually Weno on the Chuk Atoll. The country has four international airports, one for each of the states, the busiest ones being Pompeii and Chuk, whereas one domestic airport lies on Uliti. There are also small airfields and airstrips located on various islands across the country for shipping and deliveries. Today they do kind of have a small dispute with Spain over that little straggler guy Kapingamarangi. Apparently when the Spanish sold off their islands to the Germans this little guy kind of wasn't part of the deal. Eventually just kind of de facto landed in Micronesia's claim. Otherwise most of the urban centers are located on the large mountainous islands, three of which Pompeii, Chuk, and Yap host shipping harbors. If you look close to Chuk's harbor they kind of have a ship that failed. Anyway just yeah. like we talked about in the Marshall Islands it was like, 
if it's an aerial view, why is the ship sideways? <laughs> like, it makes sense now. Uh, ship is not uh, doing so good anymore. But dang, that has a lot of islands. That is like, just like, you know, yeah, I mean, it makes it interesting. I mean, uh, kind of curious. I guess you'd have family on different islands. Just like I was in, you know, pre previous countries who had a lot of islands, you know. If you have friends, you have friends that are on different islands, or did all the people you hang out with are mostly on the island you're on, kind of thing. I guess that would be the case because you know, in a bigger country, or you know, a bigger land size country, you might not know that many people in a different city. So never mind, I'm an idiot. But anyways, on with the show. This episode, Micronesia is also a compact of free association agreement state with the United States. Yada yada yada. You've heard it before. No, I haven't. I'm a new subscriber. What do you mean? Oh yeah, some people are new to this channel. Uh, well basically, in the quickest way I can summarize it. Doo -doo -doo. All right, okay, I think we're uh, kind of ready to be our own thing now. Woohoo! Oh, but you know, I already built all these bases. We have all these cool trade deals, diplomatic agreements with other nations. You guys seem to like that spam stuff as well and the burgers I introduced. I mean, do you really want to start from scratch, hmm? I mean, yes, but I don't know. Maybe we can kind of like keep this thing going, but also by relinquishing your official hold on us so we kind of have like a nominal claim to independence. Oh, Mikey, it's like you've been reading my diary. And that's basically how it happened in the 80s. And speaking of which, some notable sites of the country might include oh, no. Nan Mandol, the Yap Stones, Chuk Lagoon, one of the world's biggest wartime ship graveyards, Tamayog Trail, cool. the Lelu and Menke ruins on Kosrae. Let me guess, the ship graveyard was a great tourist spot, man. A tank, man. Wartime ship graveyards, Tamayog Trail, the Lelu and Menke ruins on Kosrae, the petroglyphs on Pompeii, the Japanese era sites like the old lighthouse, the Nefo Cave, the Yap Art Gallery Studio, Yap's Living History Museum, and honestly, probably the coolest thing to do would just be walking around the streets of any village and finding a cool cafe or mom and pop shop. Just chill. You're in Micronesia. The entire country That'd in itself cool. is kind of a spectacle to be a part of, and especially when. That is interesting though, because I. I I have been like small towns and when you're an outsider and you do sh stop at one of those like little small like uh you know little pubs or whatever you know you know I always felt like all eyes are on you like this who's this guy he's never been here before and I don't know sometimes it can feel really awkward sometimes this I guess depending on the crowd they could be it can feel really welcoming the people can be really welcoming other times you just feel like Big time outsider. <laughs> I don't know. You guys know what I mean? You ever go to like a pub you've never been to before out of town and you just kind of feel out of place kind of thing? And so, yeah, I guess it depends on where you go. You know, some people are really welcoming group and other people are just like, who's this guy? And then you just kind of get ignored and just do your thing. I don't know. I don't know why I'm even saying this, but anyways. Just chill. You're in Micronesia. The entire country in itself is kind of a spectacle to be a part of. And especially when you notice the landscape, which brings us to... Anything? Uh-oh. No! Maybe I need to meditate. Get Lee Filter at end gutter cleaning for life. Don't say Our nothing to about this. Do not do it. I swear. <laughs> Now, unlike some of their neighbors, Micronesia got lucky and snagged a few solid, fully formed mountainous islands. And when you have hills, you have an advantage. First of all, the country is spread across the Western Pacific Ocean on a smaller subregion of the Greater Pacific Plate, known as the Caroline Plate, formed by the underwater Sorrel Trough. Mount Nonlod on Pompeii is the highest peak of the country, where the longest river, the Ladao, flows. Yap and the atolls around it are the only parts of the country that cross over the Philippine Plate, over the Yap Trench. The islands were basically formed from underwater volcanoes that either partially or fully breached the surface, or both. The ones that had the edges breached became atolls, the ones that had the center breached became full-on islands, and then there was a third kind, which the center and a few edges were breached, which became lagoons. So there you oh. go, Oceanic Geology 101. And this is the part where I take a triple shot of espresso break. That means making his triumphant return. You love him, my physical geography segment co-host, Noah. Yeah, you look a little different. Hmm. 
Yeah. So what you mean? The good news is the islands get quite a bit of rain, so fresh water is never too hard to come by. Most people collect it for daily use. The islands with mountains are able to harbor small rivers and creeks, Pompeii alone having over 40, some creating beautiful waterfalls. Otherwise, you can hike at beautiful natural sites like the Sokes Rock or scuba dive in many spots like the Blue Hole. The country doesn't have a national animal, but it is a bird haven. Species like the Truk Monarch, the Pompeii Lori, the Coast Ray Greater White Eye are all endemic to the islands. Yeah. Economy-wise, the country mostly depends on agriculture and fishing. However, let's be honest, they only have about 100,000 people. So they come up with a great idea on how to capitalize off of their vast open ocean territory. Do, do, do. Uh, hey, you have a lot of ocean. Yeah. Fish in it. Yeah, so? I wanna go fish in it. Hmm. Pay up a couple million dollars and we'll give you a seasonal license. And that's how they subsidize a part of their GDP. Food-wise, you get the typical island staples, taru, breadfruit, bananas, and of course, pretty much any kind of fish they can catch will be on the menu. Don't be surprised to find betel nuts everywhere, a sort of chewing tobacco substitute that people on all islands use. Sakao is a popular drink, especially on Pompeii. It has relaxing effects that is made from squeezing the roots of the pepper shrub in the inner bark of a hibiscus tree. Kind of like the coffee drink we talked about in the Fiji episode. It's a great social drink the locals enjoy at casual get-togethers. And that brings us to... That is so weird. I'm sorry. That's weird. I would try. Like I said, if I was visiting, I would definitely try it. But it definitely, it's like, like you're kind of like almost like you're like have a dirty rag. You're kind of squeezing it out, you know. And you know, I don't know. I feel like you look like you're drinking dirt. Please don't take this the wrong way that people live in there. I know it's probably delicious and everything. I just this is kind of what came to my mind. I know you're squeezing a root and stuff. I'm so I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend anybody. I, I just I I never seen anything like that before. It just that is really interesting. And I'd actually would be really interested to see how that would actually taste. Because I I bet you it doesn't taste like how it looks. I'm right. Let me know in the comments. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you, Noah. Follow him on Instagram. All right, so if you're new to this channel, one thing you'll have to learn is when it comes to ocean people, there's a difference between Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. Micronesians are interesting because it's kind of like each island has its own story and tradition. It's like if you met your cousin once and didn't see them again for 15 years, they'd probably change a lot, but you'd still be family. First of all, the country has about 105,000 people and has about a 3% birth rate. The majority of the country is ethnically Micronesian, however split up into four distinct ethno-linguistic groups. About half of the population are Chuki, a quarter are pump. I'm sorry. What does that mean? Three percent. Uh, I don't know. I'm just slow apparently today. So distinct ethno-linguistic groups. About half of the population are Chukis, a quarter are Pompeian, 10% Yapis and Outer Yapis, about 6% Coast Rayan, and the rest of the country is made up of other groups, mostly Americans, Asians, and Polynesians. They use the American dollar as their currency, they use the Types AB plug outlets, and cool. they drive on the right side of the road. However, some of their cars might have steering wheels on the right side, so it's kind of weird. English is the official language used between all peoples, but there are eight other recognized indigenous languages spoken throughout the islands, including two Polynesian languages, languages spoken by the people on Nukuoro and Kapingamarangi. The Micronesian languages are all related, however, some of the words are completely unintelligible. For example, for hello, you have Mogatin, Ran Alim, Kaselelia, Len Wo. Yeah, they don't even sound anything alike, and each one has less than 50,000 speakers, so it shows how far the cousins can change when you're separated by thousands of miles of water for centuries. Culturally speaking, the people here come from a long yet mysterious line of chiefdoms, clans, traditions, and customs mostly rooted in oral tradition passed down through generations. There's the legend of the twin sorcerers that created Nan Madol. Supposedly what? they had the help of a flying dragon, and that's how the first dynasty was supposedly started. Not only that, but on Yap, the residents literally used these huge stone discs known as rye stones as their currency. Technically the largest currency in the world. About 65,000 of them can be found all over the islands. You can I'm sorry, was a dragon one? That is cool, man. That is cool. Imagine like, you know, telling your friends from a different country you know how you're like your history of your island that would be like some pretty cool stuff right there it was created on game of thrones
The largest currency in the world. About 65,000 of them can be found all over the islands. You can also find traditional meeting houses called Pe'ebai and Falu. They also use canoes with plated leaf sails. The Chuuk Islands has a tradition of love sticks that they kind of use for dating. The man is supposed to poke his crush and if she accepts, she's supposed to grab the sharp stick and pull him in. Essentially though, you see a lot of remnants of the former colonizers in their society. Ouch. For example, no shocker, they speak English with an American accent and generally keep up with American media and trends. They love rice too, even though it doesn't grow there. It was introduced from various nations, especially the Japanese. Most Micronesians at about 97% are Christians, introduced mostly through the Americans, Germans, and Spanish. About half of them are Protestant, half are Catholic. The more west you go, closer to the Philippines, it becomes more Catholic. The more east, it becomes more Protestant. Speaking of the introduction of outside influences, history. Ancient Austronesian people, probably from Southeast Asia, sailed in. Chieftain-based societies established. The Yap people developed quite a unique economic <laughs> and religious culture. Nan Madol is built starting the Sadler dynasty. Portuguese come by, but they don't really care too much. The Spanish pass by and care very much. They hold on to it and make it part of the Spanish East Indies. They built the town of Colonia on Pompeii. The Spanish-American War caused Spain to sell the islands to Germany. Then it became German New Guinea. World War I, the Japanese come in and take it. World War II, Operation Hailstone. The UN agrees that the US should administer the islands as a trust territory. Yap, Chuk, Pompeii, and Kosrae agree to join up and create a constitution for independence. And then they all signed the Compact of Free Association with the US in 1986. Six, compact renewed in 2004, and here we are today. Some notable people mm. who are either Micronesian or from the Federated States of Micronesia might include people like Tosiwo Nakayama, James H. Newman, Leo Falcom, Deborah Daniel, Jesse Che Mori, Orphan Ozeki, Ralinda, Manuel Mingingfell, Michael Jones McKean, Mitter Wendolin, and Kirsten Hadley. To be honest, it was a little difficult to find some of those people. I had to search Micronesian message boards. I don't know, if you just so happen to be a Micronesian person watching this video, please feel free to revise that list if you want. Anyway, friend. <laughs> Oh man, I didn't, I didn't know uh, uh, I can't. Where are you? Come on, Carousel. Sorry, there's no friend zone. Since independence in the 80s, Micronesia has built up a lot of international ties. They have ties to over 80 countries and four permanent embassies in China, Fiji, Japan, and the US. For one, China and India have both kind of competed to see who can cozy up to the islands more. China has built things like a gymnasium. They donated police cars and built the giant clam farm on Kosrae. India has given them farming machinery and offers scholarship grants. Of course, the USA is the biggest trade partner and supporter of overall. I do think it's kind of funny, like this has to go through all a lot of countries, you know, where, you know, especially like in the smaller countries, how the bigger countries are like, yeah, everybody's with me here. I'll give you this stuff. Just, you know, I want this in return. You know, it, it's getting, it's kind of funny infrastructure and developership grants. Of course, the USA is the biggest trade partner and supporter of overall infrastructure and development. As part of the Compact Association, Micronesians have access to US services like postal and communications. They can move about freely working and living in each other's countries. Micronesians are even allowed to serve in the US military. However, they don't share the same benefits as US citizen military personnel. Micronesia is part of the Nauru Agreement, a union of eight signatories in Oceania that control nearly a third of the world's tuna supply. They regulate fishing laws and manage business together. Of these nations, of course, their closest friends would probably be their Micronesian siblings, the Marshall Islands, and Palau. These two are also compact association agreement members with the U.S. Out of these two, though, Micronesia might be a little bit closer to Palau. They have a little closer history. Those yap stones were actually mined and transported from Palau. They love each other's music, and whenever they get the chance to see each other, it's like family reunion all over again. Aww. But the Marshall Islands are invited too. In conclusion, the Federated States of Micronesia are kind of like the four musketeer cousins that hadn't seen each other in a long time. They could barely speak to each other, but somehow they came together in 1986 and showed the world that an island culture can thrive well into the new era. Stay tuned. Moldova is coming up. Yeah, it looks like they're doing really good. Uh, like you said, it's almost like, like they, they all, you know, they're all family down there, but everyone's got their own thing. Every island you go to has got their own cool thing going on, and they all got a very interesting past, which... I love, I love, you know, places that just have some, like, crazy past. Like, man, you can't, how can you not love a country that has, like, dragons and sorcerers and stuff, man, as their history, man? I'm surprised they don't have, like, a dragon on there. I guess that's only, excuse me, I guess that's only one island, so you can't have it on the flag. 
but it'd be cool. You have like a big stone, like donut rock, and you have like a dragon there holding it or something. I don't know. That'd be really cool. But anyways, guys, please hit that like and subscribe button below. I uh, hope you guys have an amazing night and a great day, and I will catch you. Hope you continue to ride along with me through every country in the world. Peace. You guys have an amazing night. Uh, love you guys. Out.